Today we are taking a look at the Sony FDR AX53. This camcorder is already a few years old. In this video I will tell you what I like about this camera and what can be better. The first thing that I like about this thing is the zoom capability. It can go really far compared to other cameras. Especially ones that have larger sensors because larger sensors means the glass needs to be bigger and it will get heavier. Uh, but this thing is very compact, very tiny and it has a very large amount of zoom which is great. So it has a nice balance between sensor size and zoom because if the sensor was bigger it would have been heavier but if it was smaller then the quality was probably a little bit worse. Another thing that I like about the zoom is how quiet it is. When you zoom in or out you don't really hear it in the recording whereas with some other cameras you hear some really annoying noise uh, but with this one that isn't the case so that's really nice. You can also go really slow or really fast. Um, it can't go extremely fast, but it's fast enough for the things that I do. And depending on how fast you move this thing on the top, it can go slow or fast. The camera can also focus really close for objects. So it's really good for shooting close-up objects, which is something that I really like. Another amazing thing about this camera is that it has a microphone port and also a headphone jack. So you can listen with your headphones. And if you want a microphone, you can also put it on top. Uh, because here's a multi-interface shoe. It doesn't have the XLR port, but that's expected for a camera at this price point. A great thing about camcorders is that the battery can be small or large. So right now I have a medium-sized battery, but because it is on the back, you can also attach a larger one if you want to record for a longer period of time because with some cameras it's built into the bottom or something but with this one you can choose if you want a smaller or a larger battery. Another cool thing about this camera is the balanced optical steady shot. So the stabilization is really good when you are going to zoom in at telephoto angles and maybe if I get a little closer you can see that it moves around with the camera which is really cool. The balanced optical steady shot is good but it's not perfect. Another great thing about this camera is that it's really easy to use. You can just flip open the screen and it just starts working and you can hit record and you will get a good image most of the time. It's also great that it has a built-in lens protection so when you open it, the screen, it automatically turns on and it removes the protection. It's also nice that it has a multi-interface shoe so you can put uh, cold shoe things on the top but also for example a Sony microphone and then you don't even need a cable from here to here depending on which microphone you get. For example if you get the ECM CG60 I think it's called you do need to plug the cable into uh, the hole and then here um, but if you have something like the ECM GZ1 you can just plug it in and it works. It also has 1080p at 120 fps. So that's really nice if you want to get some slow motion of some birds or something. Uh, and I really like it because some cameras are limited to 1080p 60. But this one can do 1080 120 or 1080 100 if you are in the PAL region. I also like the manual ring on the front. You can just press and hold on the manual button and then you can select whichever mode you want. So for example if I want to change shutter speed I click on shutter. And then I can easily adjust it with the ring. And then when I hold again, I can quickly go back to zoom, for example. And now I can zoom in. It's also nice to see that the camera has a time-lapse mode. So you can go into the time-lapse mode and it will capture an image every second or every two seconds in an interval. And then later in post, you can add it together to create a time-lapse uh, video. I also think that the camera feels really good in the hand. It's not too heavy, it's also not too light. It doesn't feel cheap, it feels good. With a flippy screen it's also nice. So you can easily go from above or quickly below. And you can also, if you want, move it 180 and then use it like a vlogging camera. So now let's talk about the things that I don't like about this camera. The first thing is the poor photo quality. The photo quality is okay but it's definitely not good. You can definitely see a lot of noise and you shouldn't buy this camera if you want to take photos. There are definitely some other options out there. Uh, for example mirrorless cameras from Sony. The AX53 camera is really designed for video taking and not for photos. So if you want good photos and good video you might want to look into some other camera. The second thing is the stabilization. It's still pretty good and definitely better than most other cameras. 
However, it isn't perfect and Sony advertises it like you don't even have to use a gimbal anymore. You can definitely still see some shake and you can get those nice smooth shots like a gimbal. You can also notice that there isn't really anything for the roll axis. So when you are running, uh, and you can definitely see more in the roll axis than the pan and tilt. And that can sometimes be a little bit distracting. The image stabilization is on intelligent active. So let's do a running test. Also because of the small sensor size, you can't get a blurry background with this. Unless you really zoom in or are making a video of a close object, a close up, then you can get some background blur, but it's definitely not as much as a camera with a bigger sensor, like I'm recording on right now. Also, when recording in 4K, it's pretty obvious because the quality is good, but the file sizes are huge. So when I was on vacation, I recorded everything in XAVCS and I didn't have a lot of space left on my computer because the file sizes were very high. So to fix the high file sizes, I just shoot in AVC HD, which is still HD, no 4K. Um, it's definitely not perfect, but it's good enough for what I do. I just make some random YouTube videos. I don't do any paid work, so it's fine for me. Another thing is the internal mic. Of course you can fix it with a microphone on top, but that's a little bit of weight extra and it costs more money. But that's something you want to keep in mind. It's decent, it's definitely not terrible, but it's nothing amazing. Also, this camera can shoot some really nice videos, but it doesn't have the professional features. What I would have liked to see is an ND filter or picture profiles or both. And you might think like, well, that's a bit unreasonable for this price. But when you take into consideration that the ZV-1 is cheaper but still has the ND filters, a larger sensor and it also has the picture profiles. So I don't understand why this one doesn't have it. Also it doesn't have full manual control which is really weird. I mean it's a camcorder, it's meant for video and then you're going to limit the manual controls. You can only change between the aperture or the shutter speed and you can do them both at the same time. That can sometimes be really annoying, but uh, I've noticed that in auto mode it does a really good job, so most of the time I don't need the manual controls anyways, but it's definitely something you need to look out for if you are a professional. Also, this camera can still be pretty expensive in my opinion. It's about 800 to 1000 euros, which is a lot for a camcorder that came out in 2016. And the crazy part is, is that the camera back in that day was about the same price. So it hasn't really dropped down in price uh, and it's still about the same, which is really ridiculous when you consider that this thing is more than five years old. There's also an electronic viewfinder on the camera that you can pull up if you want, but it's definitely not so good. It's nice that they include it, but it's just really bad. The dynamic range on this camera can sometimes also be a bit of a problem. It likes to overexpose, but then when I underexpose it a little bit, so I put it on minus two EV, then the background will still be a little bit overexposed, but then the rest will be underexposed. So the dynamic range is not very good. Also, it is a region locked camera. That means that if you are in the PAL region, you can only shoot at 25 frames per second in 4K. No 30 frames per second option. And that can be kind of annoying, because I also want to shoot in 30, but I can't, so now I always have to use 25. And if you are in the NTSC region, you can only shoot in 30 frames per second and you cannot switch it to 25. So that's kind of annoying. The menu system can also be annoying. When I want to switch from 4K to 1080p slow motion, then it can take a while. Uh, and with some other Sony cameras that isn't the case but this, with this one it takes a little while and it can get really annoying and sometimes you change one setting and then when you change it it goes back to the home menu so you have to go back all the way into the settings if you want to change another setting so just changing a setting really quickly can take a long time with the menu system the camera mount on the bottom isn't that good I've had another Sony camera and that one kind of broke on me and this one has the same issue Right now mine is fine, but I think that with a few years of heavy use, it can break. And it's also on the front of the camera and not the back, which means it cannot really work with gimbals or with other equipment sometimes. 
sometimes I want to mount it on something but then it's too much back heavy and I can't move it to the front because the tripod hole is on the front and not on the back. The last thing is that it doesn't record in 4K at 50 or 60 FPS, so no slow motion at all. I think it's fine for the price point but I would have liked to see in 4K 50 or 4K 60. And I hope that when they introduce the next version, they will also introduce something like Catalyst Browse Stabilization, which the other Sony cameras do have. And that might improve the stabilization, because then you can edit later in post. I think it is worth it if you know what you're looking for, if you want a camera that can shoot very far zoom and that has good stabilization but there are definitely some other options out there like the ZV-1 which has like I said built-in ND filters, picture profiles and a bigger sensor for that better depth of field. However it doesn't have the zoom but it does have the catalyst browse stabilization and it's also a little bit lighter. However, you don't get all the camcorder features, no headphone jack and you can't attach a longer battery on it. I think this is a great camera for someone who wants to not have to mess with a lot of settings, so just hit record and get a good image. Or for someone who likes to film cars or trains or something, this is an excellent camera for that. However, if you want a lot of manual controls and you want to change everything, then this is definitely not the camera for you. There are some better options out there. Also, I think that the price is a little bit expensive. It would have been nice if it was a little bit cheaper. I don't think it is worth the amount of money that they are asking for it. However, sometimes you can find a good deal used. Also, I think this will be one of the last camcorders that Sony makes. Maybe they will introduce a new version, but you can see that they are going out of stock in most places. And um, this might be the last one that Sony makes. So um, if you really want the camcorder form factor, um, get one while you can because maybe they won't release a new version and if that's the case that will be really sad because I love campers. If you enjoyed this video make sure to leave a like or comment something down below. It took a lot of time to make this video so I hope you enjoyed it.